I am back because I promised to make something and then I didn't and then I asked if you still wanted me to make it and several people said a hearty yes. One person even said they've been waiting for it. So I'm going to teach you today to make a, a heart quilt block. After I show you how to make the block, you can do what you want with it. You can make it into a mini quilt. One commenter said she was going to turn hers into a pillow and I'm going to steal that idea because I think it's great. But I will give you more options at the end of the video for what to do with a single quilt block. I actually have an entire blog post on this topic, things to quilt that are not quilts, because I don't always have the time or inclination to make an entire quilt to commit to that. But quilting is so therapeutic and sometimes I just get in a quilting mood and I want to quilt, but I know I'm not going to end up making 12 blocks or more plus sashing and all of that stuff to make it into a whole quilt. So I love making mini quilts or other quilted things that aren't necessarily big quilts. So stay till the end if you want those ideas. But today I'm gonna to share with you how to just make this basic block. It's 10 inch block when finished. Um, before we get going though, make sure and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss anything in the future. I might try to make a video about how I turn this block into a pillow next week. So stay tuned for that. Also, you can follow me on Instagram at Pincut. So I try to share everything I'm making over there. That's a pretty fun community. So yes, like, subscribe, comment if you like this project and let's get started. Before we start though, I forgot to say one thing. You can go purchase a pattern of this for a few dollars in my pattern shop so that you don't have to keep referring back to this video for when you want for when you need the measurements again. So I'll put the measurements here in the video, but you can also go buy a, a printable version that's just more convenient to refer back to. So it'll just be of the basic quilt block, not the mini quilt or anything like that. But I also have a binding tutorial in my shop too that you can learn to do this machine binding with. It's been one of my most popular videos ever. I've been called a genius over that binding technique more times than I've ever been called a genius for anything else in my life. So you can go buy that. It's only $2 in my shop, the binding part. So I'll put the, both of those links below the video so you can go grab those too. Okay, I have already pre-cut my squares because I didn't think I needed to show you that entire process. But what you need to do is find scraps of fabric. You really don't need very much for this. But you do need fabrics that contrast well enough with each other. So for my heart, I picked darker values. And for my background, I picked lighter values. So the most important thing is that there's enough contrast between your darks and your lights. You could also reverse it and make the, the heart light and the background dark if you wanted to. So what you need of these squares is a total of the light colors. You need 34 squares. They need to measure one and three quarter inch squares. And then of your darks, you need to cut 20 total of one and three quarter inch squares. But then I'm going to teach you how to make half square triangles. And if you've never made these before, you'll probably be surprised at how they are made. You make two at a time and you make them by cutting larger squares and then sewing them together. And it turns out to be two of these half square triangles. In quilt patterns, you'll see this abbreviated as HSQ. Okay, so for your half square triangles, you need five total of your darks and five total of your lights, and you need to cut those two and a quarter inch squares. And those are gonna turn into these squares that are the same size as the rest of them. So I like to cut a few extra because I don't really know, you know, which colors I'm gonna lay out and what's gonna look best. So I always cut extra, and since we're just using scraps here, then it's pretty easy to just do that. So go ahead and cut your squares. Let me just show you an example of how I cut the strips in the most efficient way. Okay, I'll use this fabric again. So I already have a straight edge here and I have my rotary cutter. So I'm going to, well, you need to straighten this edge if it's not straight already. So first I'll cut a strip that's two and a quarter inches because that's how big I need my biggest square. Then I'll straighten this edge. 
and I only need one square that's two and a quarter inches. So I'll cut that one off at two and a quarter and set that aside here with my big blocks. But then the other squares I need to cut are only one and three quarters. So I'm gonna recut this strip at one and three quarter inches. And depending on how many scraps you find, I think I had, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different colors. So you just need to divide the number of scraps you have by the number that you need, which for the light or for the dark colors is 20. So, and then you wanna cut a few extra. So I think I cut three or four of each color. But when you lay them out later, you might want to have some options. So then I square off that end, and then I can go ahead and keep cutting at three, at one and three quarters of an inch. So then I end up with squares, and I've only had to cut off one strip of fabric and not waste from having to cut the big square first. See how that works? And then I have my squares. Okay. So the first thing we need to do is make all of our half square triangles. And this is how that works. I'm going to take you over to my machine for this part. So you're going to take one of your light squares and one of your heart dark squares. I'm going to use the white. And place them face to face, right sides together. Turn it over so your light color is on top. And you're going to get a sharp pencil and draw a light line from diagonal to diagonal like so. If you feel you need to put a, pen, a pin in here, you can. So now you're gonna take it over to the machine and sew a line of stitching a quarter inch on either side of your pencil line. You're not sewing on your line, you're sewing a quarter inch away from it on this side and then a quarter inch away from it on this side. So there's a few tools you can use on your machine that will help you with this. You'll see in the video clip that I post next, I'm going to use my, this is called diagonal seam tape. I'll link to it. I included it in a video recently of new sewing gadgets I had, and I find it very useful for half square triangles. That's what, that's what it's for. And keeping my seam lines a perfect quarter inch. Because for the machine I'm using, which is my vintage machine that I fixed up recently in a recent video, which is so fun to sew on. Um, but I don't have a quarter inch foot for her. This goes to one of my other machines. And you can see right here, it has an, an edge. And so if my needle is here in this dot, then it's a perfect quarter inch that I just run along this edge. So that's useful too. I'll link to a universal one of these. Like if you have a clip on foot machine, then that will work for that. But I'm just using my seam tape with my old vintage machine, Fran. Okay, so I've attached my seam tape here. This machine, this is my old vintage pretty machine. This machine, the needle is slightly to the left. So I made sure I lined this red line up with my needle so that I can run my drawn line against each blue line and that's a quarter inch of either side of my needle. So I'm going to line my pencil line up down here with the blue line and just start sewing. And then Obviously, if you're doing a lot of these, you can just chain piece them. So I'm just doing one to show you. Then I'll flip it and I'll line the pencil line up again with the blue line. And so a quarter inch seam on my other side of my pencil line. So then I have this. Okay, after you've done that, you can go ahead and cut on your pencil line. So then when you press, when you open these out and press them, you have two half square triangles. So let me go press these and then I'll show you how to trim them down. Okay, I pressed my seams to one side. Now you make half square triangles. You make them slightly bigger so that you can trim them down to size. Because you're sewing this on a diagonal, it's easy for it to get distorted while you sew, so they never turn out quite perfectly. So after we make them, we're gonna trim them down to one and three quarters inch to match our smaller squares here. So simply trim one side, and then be careful that you're trimming 
perpendic perpendicular? Is that the right angle? Whatever. You want to trim where you have this flat space here so that your two fabrics meet exactly in the corners. And then over here, you just trim off little dog ear. So then you have the perfect one and three quarter inch square. It also makes sense to make a few extra for when you're laying them all out, then you'll have options on where to put things. Cause you'll notice when quilting, sometimes fabrics just look off next to certain other fabrics. I'm actually very picky about fabrics for quilts. I don't use anything I don't like very much. If anything looks off to me in the beginning, I change it immediately because I don't wanna have regrets and have to go back or not like it that much. Okay, the next thing you do is you need to make 10 total of these. So you need to do this five times because each one makes two. So I'm going to finish up my half square triangles and then we'll start laying them out. Alrighty, I just finished my half square triangles. So you should have at least 10 extras if you want some to play with. So now it's time to lay it all out. I made the grid in an eight by eight pattern. So the top, I like to sort of jumble my lights and darks together. <laughs> because then I can just grab one at random. They're not all stacked up. Same with these. Okay, these are the heart pieces. I like to put the, lay them out on a surface that I can carry with me over to my machine. Today my machine happens to be right next to me, so I'll just do it right here. But sometimes I get a board of some kind and lay them out so I can carry it over without having to pick it all up. Okay, so the top row just has eight uh, light colored squares across. Five, six, seven, eight. These kinds of patterns, I like to try to make some go horizontal and some go vertical. Okay, next row has one light square and then we need a half square triangle. Oops, I don't want those next to each other. Try this one. And then we need a dark. You can always rearrange later. Then we need two half squares. And then a dark. And then another half square here. Okay. Then a light over here. So I'm going to keep laying mine out. Like I said, you can refer to the printable version of this from my shop if you need to. This next row will be the same as that one. When choosing fabrics for quilts like this, in this case, I chose first a print that I really liked with these bright colors. And then I found other coordinating scraps in my bin that had fabrics that would match. So I looked for oranges, purples, the bright red, but it's mostly all based on that one print that I really love. Okay, here we need another half square this way. And then we'll put that one there. Looking good so far. I think I need to move this up so y'all can see it better. I'm missing one. Here we go. There we go. Okay, it's looking good. Oh, I need one more row down here. I'm wondering why I had so many extras. There, I mean, it looks perfect. I have a nice disbursement of the patterns. I mean, of the prints, so nothing looks really heavy on one side or the other. Now, let me tell you, on this version, I actually made some more half square triangles of just my darks and some more of just my lights. 
and I interspersed them within the lights and darks. So that's another option for you too. You could even make them all half square triangles. That would be a lot more work. <laughs> so this one I'm keeping more simple. Okay, the next step, obviously, you've probably guessed, is to sew your strips together. So you should have eight rows and you're gonna sew them each together, one row at a time. So yep, it can feel tedious. Some people make these elaborate systems of stacking and numbering, but and then they can chain piece more easily, but I just find it's easier for me and I mess up less if I just flip one over, take it over the machine, sew it, unflip it, add the next one, take it over the machine and sew it. So that's what I'm gonna work on next. Make sure you're keeping your seams exactly a quarter inch. This one, it's kind of funny because I started out using one sewing machine that has a quarter inch foot on it. And that machine went on the fritz right in the middle of this project. So I switched to a different machine. And now this whole piece is like wider at the bottom than it is at the top because my machines just, the, the seams just weren't exactly right. Even just a tiny scant amount difference can make a big difference. So whatever you're doing, just keep it consistent. All right, I finished my first row. See how much smaller it looks when it's all sewn together? They don't look square, they look rectangle now, but that's because this is also gonna have a seam allowance when you sew it to the next row. So they'll all be perfect squares in the end. So my next step is to just keep sewing rows. Wait, I forgot to tell you, you wanna press your seams open like this. This will help reduce bulk when you sew the whole, whole shebang together. Alrighty. I've been working for less than an hour and I have all my strips. I should have, I should have timed how long that took me. But anyway, I have all my strips sewn together. So the last step is to stitch your rows together one at a time. So just flip it over onto the next one. This step, you can place some pins if you want to, or you can just sew along and match up your seams as you go. It helps to keep an awl handy. Let me show you what I mean, because that word sounds weird. <laughs> or a pin will work too. So as your seams are going under the machine, this helps you without getting your fingers under the presser foot, helps you make sure your seams are flipping the right way as you're sewing them. And then you're gonna press each seam open again, just like you did all of these. And then you'll just do the next one until you have all eight stitched together into a perfect square. Okay, I'm all done. I really love the fabrics I picked. I tried to challenge myself with brighter colors because I always tend to pull out muted colors in like the same color palette. And I really wanted to do something different that's Valentine's-y, but I also didn't want it to look like too sweet, you know? So <laughs> I really like these. Okay, so here's what you can do with your finished block. Of course, you can make several of these and add sashing and turn it into a quilt. That would be so beautiful. But you can also just make a mini quilt. And even though I'm not going to demonstrate this, you can follow the exact same instructions as are in my oversized hot pad tutorial. That's the exact same method that I finished this mini quilt with. The only difference is that when I make a mini quilt that I might hang on the wall, I put in, I fold a square in half. I think I cut a three inch square. I fold it in half this way and I just stick it here before I put my binding on. Well, this way, of course. <laughs> And I baste it onto the corners before I bind the quilt. And that creates this little pocket for a wooden dowel. So that's an option. Of course, I also like to hang things on my line, my clothesline in here from Ikea. <laughs> so that's one option to finish your mini quilt. The reason I want to make a pillow out of mine is because I just bought this purple cotton gauze on clearance in the remnant bin at Joann's. And I think it would make the coolest borders for a pillow. So if you want to make a pillow, you probably do need to make it bigger. Of course you can make it tiny too, but I'm going to make mine bigger. So I probably am going to add five inch borders or maybe I'll just go buy a pillow form and make it fit the pillow form. I'll probably make a video for that too. If you do want to see that, let me know in the comments. Oh, also I do have on my blog, I don't have a video for this, but on my blog, I do have a quilted pillow tutorial. So I will link to that also. There's going to be a lot of links. I hope I don't miss any. <laughs> Another idea is to make three or five of these and make a table runner. You can do all kinds of things. You could even just make the mini quilt and put it on your table for Valentine's Day. Make it a candle mat or a mug rug. So I hope that gives you some ideas, but I will also link the post with all the other quilt block ideas or the quilting ideas that aren't quilts. <laughs> it's kind of a mouthful, but it's been one of my most popular 
blog post from the last year. So I will link you to that. And if you make a heart block, I would love to see it if you tag me on Instagram at pincutso. Also be sure and go to my blog and check out my other sewing content and tutorials. The link is below, but it is pincutsostudio.com. And of course, make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss new things. I'll see you soon. Bye. Thank you.